Okay, today we're going to be looking at something called effusion. Effusion and diffusion, they're, as far as we're concerned, fairly synonymous. Diffusion is the rate at which a series of gas particles spread out uh, in a sealed container like this. And effusion is how quickly they leave a container through a small hole. Uh, and we can show that here because uh, we can uh, use this uh, slider here to make a small hole. And we'll start with a larger uh, size gas molecule. And we'll keep the pressure constant. And uh, obviously they're diffusing at a rate that is... Uh, you know, relative to the temperature, their kinetic energy, but also their size. And if we open up a small hole here, we know that uh, every once in a while, one of them's going to make its escape. And of course, it has a lot. Um, boom, there goes one right there. And it has a lot to do with the temperature, but we'll keep that constant. And it also has to do with their size, because if we tried this again with a series of smaller molecules, Right off the bat, we can tell that they're moving quite a bit faster. The temperature is the same, and so the kinetic energy is the same, but their velocity is quite a bit greater. It's inversely proportional to their mass. So if we open up our small hole here, these are going to diffuse or effuse out through our container quite a bit faster. Uh, we'll do a lab that kind of assesses this, but let's get a look at the mathematical relationship. And so if effusion is the rate at which gases leave, uh, we could say that it is uh, inversely proportional to their mass. But in the case of uh, calculating the root mean square velocity, uh, the square, of, square root of the mass is uh, more applicable. So... Here's how this works. We're going to be looking at what we're going to call Graham's Law of Effusion. And it's a really simple equation. And here's how this works. If we were going to be comparing the rate of effusion of two different gases, we would say the rate for gas 1 as it effuses out through a container versus the rate of gas 2. And if we were going to be comparing these things, we would say that it has to do with the root mean square velocity of gas 1 versus the root mean square velocity of gas 2. Well, the equation for calculating root mean square velocity, you will remember from last time, it's equal to the square root of 3 RT over the mass in kilograms. And so if we plug that into here, here's what we have. Square root of 3 RT over the mass in kilograms of gas 1 divided by the square root of 3 RT divided by the mass of gas 2. Well, if that's the case, and 3RT are constant values, and the only thing that's different is the masses of gas 1 versus gas 2, then we're basically dividing by the inverse, and of course that comes out looking like this. Square root of mass of gas 2 over the square root of mass of gas 1. And that's the whole thing. So let's try one and see if we can figure this out. So here's a typical problem we might expect to run into. It says a gas effuses through an opening at a rate that is one-third as fast as that of helium gas. Obviously, that means that the helium gas is going to be three times faster. So what is the molar mass of the unknown gas? So if Graham's law of effusion says that the rate of gas 1 over the rate of effusion of gas 2 is equal to the square root of the mass of gas 2 over the square root of the mass of gas 1. I always like to make the known number 1. So we'll take helium and we'll make that rate 1. Well, 
it says that the rate of the unknown is one-third as fast. That means that the helium is three times as fast. So we'll make rate one, our helium, three. We'll make rate two, our unknown, one. We know that helium has a molar mass of four grams. That shouldn't be a mystery. We've been using molar mass in kilograms here, so we'll keep it in kilograms just to keep it consistent. And so we're going to say square root of 0 0.004 kilograms, and this is going to be our unknown mass of gas 2. So we're going to solve for the mass of gas 2, and so I'm simply going to cross multiply, and we get 3 times the square root of 0 0.004 kilograms equals, well, 1 times the square root of the mass of gas 2. So let's bust out our calculator and do some fancy button work. So here's my calculator, and we're going to say 3, oops, we'll say 3 times the square root of point. 0, 0, 0.004 oops 0, 04 and this is 0.1897 so 0.1897 is equal to the square root of m squared and we want to get that by itself so let's square everything and this should be equal to the uh, mass of our known. Sorry, so let's square our answer. Here is the molar mass of our unknown. And let's be careful because this is in kilograms. And so the molar mass of our own known is 36 grams, right? 0 0.036 kilograms. The problem doesn't ask us to specify the identity of the unknown, but we easily could as long as it was a pretty reasonable answer, say like a, a diatomic gas. And in a number of cases uh, that, you know, will be pretty obvious. This one's not so obvious, but it's not asking for the identity of the unknown, so we can stop here. But be prepared for a problem to ask for the actual identity. And it will almost always be something either diatomic or something pretty obvious. All right, let's take that for a spin.